Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Recently, Hire.com released their State of Software Engineers report for 2022. So in this video, I wanna go over some of the most fascinating insights I gathered from reading that report, including which role is the highest in demand right now, which programming languages are the most in demand in 2022, and in the post-pandemic era, is remote work here to stay? So stay tuned to the end of the video to find out the answer to these questions. Hired.com is an online employment platform catered specifically towards technology roles like software engineers, engineering managers, etc. By the way, this video isn't sponsored by Hired.com in any way, shape or form, but maybe it should be. So Hired, if you're watching this, let's chat. What I love about this report is that it is not just based on self-reported data. Hired is analyzing hundreds of thousands of their own proprietary data points, and that gives me a little bit more confidence. The issue with surveys and self-reported data is a lot of the times it's the people that tend to have really high salaries that um, are more inclined to report their salary. So we get a really skewed idea of what the average software engineering salary is. Because let's be real, every day you come across someone on LinkedIn or Reddit talking about their $300,000 total compensation package, all their stock grants and bonuses, and we just lose sight of what the average software engineering salary looks like. By the way, if you want to read the report in its entirety, I'm going to drop the link in the description box below. So the first thing that really stood out to me in this report is that the job market is hot, really, really hot. Software engineers received twice as many interview requests in 2021 as they did in 2020. So if you've been considering a change, now might be the time to do it because it is an employee's market. Obviously, the one caveat to this data point is that 2020 was the beginning of the pandemic. A lot of companies were laying people off, they froze hiring, they probably weren't interviewing a lot of people. Then 2021 came and we realized the pandemic was gonna be here for much longer and remote work became the new normal all the companies started hiring rapidly again and i can tell you from personal experience that 2021 was the mass exodus of software developers even in 2022 a lot of software engineers that i personally know are being offered salaries 50 to eighty thousand dollars more than what they're getting paid right now so everyone is still switching jobs left right and center i'm going to go over some more data later on in this video that suggests this trend might continue to increase driven largely by the popularity of remote work the next insight is that full stack engineer is currently the most in demand role. According to Hire.com, interview requests for full stack engineers showed the highest increase in volume compared to other software engineering roles. And it is the role that receives the most interview requests overall. By the way, if you don't know what a full stack engineer is, it's basically someone that can do the client side programming as well as the back end. It's because companies seek to maximize their engineering team team's efficiency. This obviously makes sense because rather than hiring a separate back-end and front-end engineer, you could just theoretically hire one person to do both jobs. Does this mean that you should go out and be a full-stack engineer? No, of course not. The demand for full-stack engineers is only slightly more than back-end. So honestly, I think the most important factor is what you enjoy doing every day. Go or Golang is currently the most in-demand programming language or skill. According to this chart, Go is currently the most in-demand and, uh, programming language, software developers with this skill receive 1.8 times the number of interview requests as the marketplace average. Also, Golang is a newish programming language developed by Google in 2012. This is followed closely by Ruby on Rails and Scala. Or is it Scala? Does this mean that you should go learn Go? No <laughs> pun intended. The thing that you have to keep in mind is that trends come and go, and next year, the new hottest programming language might be something else. So I think that if you haven't mastered mastered the basic foundations like HTML, CSS, one front-end language, and one back-end language, then you should understand those deeply first before you jump on and learning another language. Mastery in one programming language and really understanding the foundations will make it infinitely easier for you to pick up another programming language somewhere in the future. The other key insight, and you probably already know this, is that remote work is absolutely here to stay. A lot of cities like Denver, San Diego, Austin offer 
prefer more remote roles than they do in-person roles. And I think this goes a long way in terms of explaining why so many people are moving away from San Francisco into a lower cost of living area. It's these smaller tech hubs that have shown the highest increases in remote salaries. Before the pandemic, generally San Francisco by far offered the highest salaries. And honestly, this might not be the case going forward. As you can see here, smaller markets such as Austin, Denver, and Pittsburgh are quickly catching up. Austin and Chicago, for example, increased remote salaries by a whopping 8% from 2020 to 2021. Given that now Canadians can work for American companies and be paid in that sweet, sweet USD, a lot of Canadian companies are now being pressured to raise their salaries to incentivize employees to stay. So you can see here that Toronto has seen a whopping 14% increase in remote salaries in order to stay competitive with the American markets. All in all, I think the report is really encouraging if you're a software engineer. It shows that demand is still fairly strong for software engineers. Salaries continue to increase, especially in smaller markets like Austin, uh, Chicago. Because of the rise of remote work, people aren't forced to live in really high cost of living areas like San Francisco. So in the next video, I'm gonna go over the top paying tech companies today and what salaries they're offering for different roles. So I will see you in the next one. Talk to you later.